Be sure to download the note card you'll find in the video description, a link to the note card, and follow along with the lesson, fill it in. It'll be a record for you of what you have learned in this lesson from the Bible. And I'll, by all means, get your Bible. Go get your Bible. How many of you have a Bible? I always ask that question. I always like to see the Bible. So get your Bible. Follow along. And if you like this sermon, ring the bell. Also, uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring the bell to get a notification of when new content is added. If you want to follow us on social media, links to our social media account are in the video description. So now, let's jump into the sermon. Jesus once answered a lawyer by stating the greatest commandment was to love God with all one's heart, soul, and mind. Matthew 22 and verse 37. Furthermore, he stated in that same opening, the second greatest commandment was to love one's neighbor as oneself. Matthew 22, 39. And a second is like it, he said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I want to notice in this lesson how the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans fleshes out these two great commandments as we look at the greatest commandment in the book of Romans. I want you to first of all notice how Paul talks about our love for God. In this lesson, the greatest commandment in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 12 and in verse 1, he said, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual, or some translation says, reasonable service or worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Presenting our bodies as living sacrifices emphasizes our love for God and contrasts the way we show it under the new, new covenant. God also takes notice of the quality of our sacrifice. It is to be a holy and acceptable sacrifice, which is also reasonable or rational. We are not to conform to the world, but to be transformed by the word. In so doing, we demonstrate to the world that God's ways are good and acceptable. Showing our love for God, Paul presents in the first two verses of Romans chapter 12. Then he moves on to our love for self. Notice these next verses, if you will. Notice verse 3. He said, for by the grace given me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Humility is required. One who is lacking in humility tells on himself. What he tells is he hasn't been in the presence of God for some time. We need humility. Sure, we need to show concern for ourselves, but we need to be humble. And it tells if we're not. Then Paul moves on to 
our love for others. Remember in Jesus' statement in Matthew 22 and verse 39 that you shall love your neighbor as yourself, showing a love for others there in Matthew 22 and verse 39. First of all, notice our love for our brethren. Romans chapter 12 and in verse 4. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, individually members of, watch this, one another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in, in our serving, the ones who teach in his teaching, the ones who exhorts in his exhortation, and the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Use your gifts to bless brethren is the emphasis. Watch verses 9 through 16. Let your love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Then he says, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful or lazy in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Love involves more than words. It involves our action. Showing our action toward our brethren. And then he, we see our love for enemies. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute. Bless and do not curse them. Notice the depth of the response in verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Verse 19, he said, Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, God says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And then watch how far the extent of this goes. Verse 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, watch this, live peaceably with all. That depends on you. Only you can control yourself. I can't control you. I can't control the other person, but I can control my response to that other person. So as much as it depends on me, live peaceably with all. We can control how we react to situations. Romans 18 and verse 20. Going so far as if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And what do you do by doing that? The old ancient custom, you help him by 
putting burning coals in the basket he would carry on his head back to his place for warmth. You help him in that regard is what you do. Romans 12 and verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do good. The response is active and not passive. So what have we seen in this passage? We have seen the greatest commandment fleshed out by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, starting out in verse 1 and 2, our love for God. And certainly that is the utmost commandment is to love for God. And then he deals with our love for self, how we are to be with ourselves. That is to be humble, not arrogant. And then showing our love for our neighbors, as Jesus said, or for others, starting out with our brethren. Use your gifts to bless them, verses 4 through 8. And then love is more than words. It involves action, verses 9 through 16. And then how we're to love our enemies. We're to bless those who persecute us and bless and do not curse them. And in so doing, we heap coals of fire on their heads. We help them with things they need and hoping one day they'll no longer be an enemy, but will be a friend indeed. That's Jesus. As Paul explains the commandment that he gave, the greatest commandment, love God. What must I do to be saved? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He who comes to God must believe that he is. Hebrews eleven six. without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. John chapter 8 and verse 21, Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then he commands all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17, verse 30, truly the times of ignorance God overlooked now commands all men everywhere to repent. Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And then with the mouth, confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God unto salvation. Romans 10, 10, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and it's with the mouth we confess unto salvation. Being baptized for the remission of our sins, as Peter said, to repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And we find in Romans 6, 3, and 4, baptism is a burial. But what is God's conditions of salvation for the Christian? If a Christian sins, he is to repent. Notice, a Christian is to remain faithful. He who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Revelation 2, 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. If a Christian sins, he is to repent. Simon the sorcerer in 8, chapter, Matthew chapter 8, and verse 22 was told to repent, therefore, of this your witness wickedness and perhaps the thought and intent of your heart may be forgiven you we're to confess if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us 
And then the one who sins, the Christian who sins, is to pray God if perhaps the thought of his heart may be forgiven him. We call on you to obey the gospel and remain faithful. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to download the note card that goes with this lesson. You can find it in the description below. Also, our lessons are found on Rumble at SPH, Ch SPH Church. Our lessons are found on Rumble at SPH Church. Our Sunday morning Bible study, 935. Sunday morning worship service, 1045. 4 p.m. in the pre evening for our pre evening worship, Wednesday evening at 6 30 p.m. Come join us in person or watch these lessons online. Thank you.